You said you had eight qualified championships. We did. Yes. Do you want to go through if you can remember all eight at one time? We did. We, um, you know what? Uh, Pua Hall had made a decision um, months before to actually move back home. I mean, that, that kid, boy, she she stayed away for I guess a little over a year away from her family and lived here and trained and did everything and um, you know our heart went out to her and she made the decision she wanted to move back home and she was going to move back with her family. So um, on the way out, she said, "Hey, can I go to this qualifier? Can I see how far?" We said, "Of course." So um, we were excited to see that she had qualified to championships, even though she was going to move home. She's still going to go to championships with another club. We had no problem with that. We have to wait over her. So um, we wish her the best of luck. Um, and then we had uh, Keanu Winston, Kennedy Baker, uh, Chelsea Davis, who had all been to championships before. So um, they qualified uh, pretty early on. Um, let's see, past that we were excited. We had um, Ashton Kim who qualified, who was just, I mean, she was a Hopes kid last year. She's eligible for Hopes this year, 12. And uh, she went in and did a phenomenal job and uh, got the qualifying score, I think, a couple of times. So she did really well. So we we're excited to see a little 12 year old kind of break in and maybe go out and get a little bit of fun experience and start. Uh, you know, hanging with the big girls. Uh, Peyton Ernst, who came in, and this is her first year elite, um, so she came in as, I believe, a level nine, and uh, started to put together some good stuff, and just kind of got on the fast moving train with the rest of those kids, and just tried to hang, and in the process, you can't, you know, not get, become a great gymnast, and uh, she just did, did exactly what she was supposed to do, so, um, and then we had Claire Boyce that had moved in, and again, Claire pretty easily got the score, um, and then you know, we do just, you know, hey, let's play with this, and let's fine tune this, and, you know, so we, we're just trying to get her ready, too, so I think that's, that's, that's well, and then Dare Maxwell is the last one, so, um, and Dare's been with us for probably, I'm going to mess that up, but probably, I want to think about six months. Um, and so Dare came in, we were very excited to see her, and uh, she's made a decision also to commute and live here with Chelsea Davis. Um, so, you know, kids that make that kind of commitment, I mean, they, they just are a real inspiration to all of us because they, they give so much to be here and be part of this madness, you know, this thing. So we were excited to see it pay off for her, and she's done a phenomenal job. And had a couple of bumps and bruises, and probably one of them. One of the most inspirational competitions I've seen where you know, she had kind of a little rolled ankle one day and uh, right before the qualifier we just thought, oh, it's over and uh, went out and just pushed through it and did a phenomenal job and qualified a championship like it could be. So we were very excited to see. So that's, that's our stack. That's our lineup this year. So. Cool. And um, I know, so Chelsea's been here a while and you have... You guys, you and Kim just have a special bond with her, it seems yeah, like, and I know you've been through a lot with her. Um, can you just talk about the past few, few months and where she is now? Yeah, well, you know, adversity is, we'll do that. You know, anytime you're in any challenges like that, if it's not just a completely easy situation, you know, you have a roller coaster and it, it just kind of develops that bond. I mean, trying to push through that, and, and uh, we have certainly gotten closer with her. And, you know, we, there were times when we were coaching one kid, it was just her. And then there's times like today where we have like 16 kids, and she's kind of part of that army, and she's the leader of that. Um, so it, it has been very difficult. She said this is somebody who uh, is just my hero to watch her go through as many injuries as she's had, and, and all of them different, and all of them, you know, some of them really, really crazy. Um, some of them, you know, you kind of look at it and go, wow, I don't know, I don't know what kind of caused this. Um, so, and some of them, you know, like I, I was telling you earlier, I said she's doing full pirouette a few months ago, and lands and comes down and sticks her finger in my face and says, look at that. And it's sticking the wrong way. And she goes, can you believe I just did that? And, you know, clearly has broken her finger. And uh, I said, oh my gosh. So we ran her down. She got an x-ray. She got, you know, fixed. And I said, okay, well, it's going to be a few weeks. And she goes, no, I'm going to training camp. And uh, seven days later, she was back up on the bar doing a full career wedding. You know, and it's just, and, and she's incredible. So, um, so that certainly brings us together. But to see things like that, even in the past few months, you know, that was recent. Um, to see that happen, she's a smarter gymnast. She's one who can get injured and she can take a little time off. And she can come back and know that she doesn't have to be completely dramatic. That it's, the world is not going to end. She's going to recover from it. Um, she's a more stable gymnast and understanding that she can put it back together really, really quickly. So we don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, she's going to need three months to prepare. Um, so, you know, it's she's she's just my hero. I think she's, she's inspiration for a lot of it. Yeah.